Is Tempest Rising the new Command and Conquer? Well, yes and no. To make that answer less confusing, stay a while and listen. My name is Peter and I am taking a deep dive into Tempest Rising gameplay as well as all of its up to now confirmed features, developer interviews and bits of info gathered from many different sources as we watch the first mission in the GDF campaign unfold. Let's clear the table and set the stage first to make sure those Command and Conquer parallels are put to rest. No, this game has no story connection to any Command and Conquer game or franchise. It has its own unique setting, story and characters and I will tell you all about them during this video. Yes, its gameplay is very similar to Tiberium, Red Alert and Generals, the three Command and Conquer franchises. No, the GDF is not the GDI from Tiberium, yes it does look and play like them. No, Tempest Dynasty is not Nod, yes they do have lots of similarities. No, there are no live action cutscenes in Tempest Rising, but very high quality cinematics and in-game cutscenes with unit models which use 4K and 8K textures. Yes, there is a unit limit, but it's not as bad as it sounds, I will explain. No, there are no heroes in this game, but there are specialist units which I will go into more detail. Yes, there are super weapons of sorts in the game, no, we haven't seen any of them yet. Yes, the main resource called Tempest looks almost like Tiberium. No, it's not a crystal, it's a plant. Yes, there are three factions, but no, we don't know what the third faction looks like yet. I will spin some theories with you based on what the developers have said. Now that we have that out of the way, what is the actual story and background of Tempest Rising? Basically, it's an alternative, clunky, retro sci-fi universe which broke from our own timeline in the 1960s during the Cuban Missile Crisis which ended in an all-out nuclear third world war followed by a nuclear winter which lasted for four decades. During that time, two factions formed, the GDF and the Tempest Dynasty. GDF stands for Global Defense Forces. It is made up of pre-war countries who rebuilt faster than the rest of the world. Also, their territories have become rich with tempest vines which grew out of the cracks in the ground after the war and proven to be an incredibly potent source of power. Basically, fusion-powered creepy crawler plants. The second faction, Tempest Dynasty, is a mix of population and countries which suffered the most from the original nuclear bombardment. They have banded together to collect and harvest as much power from Tempest Vines as they can and they do not want to allow GDF to take it from them. This is the new world order and the race for power is now on with Tempest as the main prize. We as the players jump into this universe in the year 1997 just as the conflict between GDF and Tempest Dynasty is heating up. But there are no good guys or bad guys here. Each side has their own reasons for world domination as well as grey and hard decisions behind that objective. We'll get to learn all about these during two 15 mission long campaigns, one for each faction. So that is the story and setting. But what about gameplay? As you can see, it is based on the classic RTS fast moving and high damage dealing combat with infantry, armor, air and a few amphibious units. There is base building, which we'll get to see a bit later in this playthrough of the first GDF campaign mission. And of course, there are the famous red exploding barrels, the staple of 90s game design. As you can see, all of the gameplay is based on the classics which these developers grew up on and love to play to this day, just as they explained during the showcase at Gamescom. Dune 2, Warcraft, Starcraft, Command and Conquer, all of these games represent the core idea behind Tempest Rising's gameplay, which as they said is a love letter to the RTS player community. And there is a little bit of each of those games in it as you will see and learn during this video. The Tempest plants and their use is almost like the Tiberium crystals in the Tiberium franchise of CNC. The base building system with even sandbags, walls and gates is straight out of there as well. Other base defenses include turrets with different weapon systems specialized in taking out different enemy classes, gatling guns and flamers versus infantry, 
artillery turrets versus armor, and missiles against air units. The airstrike and similar call-in powers are more like the general's unlockable and upgradable combat callings. Tanks can actually run over and crush infantry like in some CNC games. The GDF has no builder unit and new buildings are sent prepackaged from the construction yard to new building construction locations by drones. There is power in this game, so building power plants is necessary to keep buildings operational, but also those defensive turrets as well. This will of course make sniping power plants a favorite tactic when attacking well-defended bases. There are units like CNC's engineers, which can take over enemy buildings and even the enemy construction yard. This means you can gain a whole second building construction and unit recruitment tree and produce units of the other factions. And on the topic of factions, while I already mentioned what the two factions we already know about remind us of, the third faction is currently called the Tempest Mystery as the developers didn't want to show it off yet. It won't be playable in the campaign, but rather in the skirmish and multiplayer modes. Only thing they have said about it is that it is directly connected to the reason why Tempest Mines are coming out of the ground. Considering how many parallels there are with Tiberium in this game, my top two assumptions are this. The third faction is either aliens with advanced tech who come out of the ground after sleeping under the Earth's crust for millennia until woken up by the nuclear war. Or they are a whole new fast evolving set of animals mutated by all the radiation. So no tech, just hungry mouths and teeth. Now the devs might even go full on Tiberium and have them come from outer space to harvest tempest wines and clear the plant of humans, but I think they will be more creative than that. Since I mentioned multiplayer, for now we know there will be the normal skirmish versus AI as we could see in the main menu screenshot and the devs noted that the AI will have different difficulty levels to fit both newcomers and veterans of the genre. When it comes to the PvP multiplayer, that is divided into two sections. Custom games, where you choose the setting and map, as well as the number of slots for players or AI. And the automatic, ranked, matchmaking with ELO rating. So the eSports side of the game is already prepared, as developers hope it will have a large enough player base to get a live eSports scene going. One of the people responsible for making the gameplay balanced and fun to play in these matches is none other than Brandon Wavert Castell, who you might know from his blog, YouTube channel and always active Twitter about RTS games. He is just one of the people developers from Slipgate Ironworks employed straight out of the RTS community to help them create the game all RTS fans will enjoy playing. Now, their job is made harder by the fact that the three factions are asymmetrical and each features its own distinct economy and playstyle. Also, as different players have different approaches to gameplay, like rushing or turtling, the developers wanted to balance those and make sure each is a valid option for those players. On top of that, there are built-in customization options for players to use in both single-player and multiplayer game modes. We haven't seen any of those yet but hopefully will soon. What we know so far is that during the campaign, you as the commander have access to a few menu tabs called Doctrine, Commissary and Armory. We saw those on the top of the screen during the pre-mission briefing by the GDF General, where we could also use the game's RPG elements to question the General to gain more information about the upcoming mission, status of the conflict, other characters and so on. Now, from what I was able to understand from multiple sources of information, the Commissary is most likely going to be the place to talk to and recruit specialists. These are units which actually have their own storylines as well as special uses on the battlefield. The Doctrine screen is, and this is just my best guess, where you edit the superpowers slash call-in powers which are at your disposal during missions like the airstrike which is used in the first mission and do note the developers actually added it into this mission for demo purposes it might not be available in this mission in the release version 
As for the last room, the armory, that is where the customization of units will probably happen. Will it be about choosing what units you will bring to the mission? Or what kinds of extra weapons or abilities will they have? I can't say for sure. And on the subject of units, as we see in the gameplay at the top right, there is an actual unit limit counter in Tempest Rising. Now I do know all of you CNC fans will be upset by this, but the maximum number is still not final and by the looks of it, each unit represents a single digit. So it's not like in Crossfire Legion or Starcraft where bigger units take up more of the unit limit. And also there are no buildings required to keep expanding your unit limit. As for side objectives during the mission, these are totally optional, but when completed, will give the player something in return like new units to fight on in the rest of the mission. The developers didn't want to comment on a number of other game features, like modding, the map editor, co-op campaign, but considering they didn't say no to any of these, they will probably be included at some point. Another thing we haven't seen much of here are cinematics, which devs mentioned Tempest Rising has a ton of, besides all the in-game cutscenes with really amazing unit textures which use 4K and 8K resolutions for those cutscenes. As for naval units, the developers said there are no battleships or anything like that, but they noted there are some types of naval units, like the amphibious kinds we see in the screenshot. Now, after going through this footage and all these features and information about the game, I honestly think this is as close as we have ever been to a AAA high fidelity RTS game in a very long time. This is no early access type of a project, it's a complete game coming in 2023 with all the factions, game modes, cinematics and cutscenes a title like this should have. I have already shown you 45 new and upcoming RTS games in one of my previous videos, link up here and below, and Tempest Rising is definitely among the top 5 of those, right along Homeworld 3 and Company of Heroes 3. Another thing I want to mention is that these games also need to be accompanied by an awe-inspiring music soundtrack, just like the famous Hell March from Red Alert. And Tempest Rising has its own, called Dead Squad among many others. And on that musical note, I will invite you to join me next time for another video about Tempest Rising and other amazing RTS games. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!